Hello everybody and welcome to this video. It's another in the student exemplar series. This student wants to remain anonymous, which is absolutely fine. But if you want to send your work in to be featured in a video, if you've done a really good piece of work for GCSE English Literature, then send it to me, info at mrbruff.com. And if we feature the work in a video, I'll send you a copy of my guide to English language and my guide to English literature. So this was based on the extract, which is the first paragraph of the Carew murder case. Started with this extract, how does Stevenson present the theme of good versus evil? Write about how Stevenson presents good and evil in the extract and how Stevenson presents good and evil in the whole novel. So this is an interesting answer. We'll go through it and hopefully we'll all learn something from the experience. Stevenson presents how the repressed evil inside of man may overpower the parts which are good. In the extract where Sir Danvers Carew is murdered, he is described to breathe such as innocent and old world, world kindness. The word innocent suggests how Carew was harmless and was only a good-natured man in the street. Furthermore, the fact that he didn't seem innocent but in fact would breathe innocence demonstrates how pure he is and how he has a virtuous personality. This is juxtaposed by the actions of Hyde, who broke out in a flame of anger. The use of the metaphor flame of anger suggests Hyde's uncontrollable and unpredictable nature and the frenzy he is in. The juxtaposition of these two characters, Carew's serenity and Hyde's hysteria, heightens this sense of chaos and exemplifies Hyde's immorality. Also, as flames usually carry connotations of hell, torture and Satan, it shows how dangerous Hyde really is, creating a tense atmosphere. Arguably, it could be said that this is a symbol for the Marxist revolution because the reputable man, Sir Danvers Carew, could be seen as a symbol of the upper class and Hyde, who viciously murders Carew, could be a symbol for the lower class. The way that Hyde murders Carew in the streets could be seen as a possible suggestion of the Marxist revolution. So let's just talk about this paragraph, some really nice language analysis, which I think is probably the easiest side of English literature, and then the beginnings of some structural analysis uh, with the juxtaposition and saying, look, it's not just here's a positive and here's a negative, but it's when we place the two next to each other, why is that significant? For me, this would have been a great opportunity to then branch out and write about Stevenson's themes of the two sides of uh, humans or the appearances versus reality, um, and maybe even a little bit about the society at the time, the way it acted one way but was a different way. You know, just kind of bringing in a little bit more about the the writer's themes here. Because the question was about the presentation of good and evil, and this student has picked out the sort of good and evil in the extract and then linked it to the Marxist revolution um, and said, you know, well, the, the good and evil is there because of Marxism, um, which is certainly one way to look at it, but I think it, it would have been... Uh, a, a great opportunity to write about what is Stevenson saying about good and evil? What is he saying about, you know, the, the sort of context he was writing in about how people hide certain negative aspects of their character and all of that sort of thing could have been brought in there. In the extract, Stevenson shows how once the evil of a man is released, it will lose control. For example, Hyde clubbed Carew to the earth with ape-like fury. The animalistic imagery of an ape suggests how primitive his behaviour is and could possibly hint to his savagery. The link of the ape to Hyde to technically is human could be in reference to Darwin's theory of evolution, that we have evolved from apes, that this animalistic savage behaviour does exist in everyone, including those who seem most pure. Furthermore, the fact that he clubbed Kiru creates a violent image in the reader's mind as the verb club holds connotations of bash and bludgeon, which are not only violent but incredibly graphic. This murder links to the beginning of the novel where Hyde calmly trampled over the girl. The development from calmly trampling to clubbing a man to the ground in seconds could possibly depict how the rep repression of Hyde's evil nature for so long only made things more damaging. Moreover, this development of violent behaviour could foreshadow how things won't get better in the future of the novel, but only worse, thus creating an ominous atmosphere for the reader. This could be referenced to the repression of people's true desires, and how eventually at some point the working class just may explode and rise up against the rich, as Hyde has begun to at this point in the novel. So again, here's a paragraph which actually follows a pretty much identical um, sort of order to the previous one. Some nice language analysis, close word language analysis, thinking carefully 
about the words and individual words. And then some structure analysis, a really clever point, probably the, the most impressive point in the answer so far, where the uh, student thinks about the progression from calmly trampling to clubbing. A little link then to what um, the, the author might be saying through this, and again a little link to the sort of context. But this bit is where the, the student needs to write more. You know, again, what is the author saying? What is the message? Because we have to be careful when we're writing about literature texts that we don't write about them as if the characters are real and we're learning something about the character. We write about them as if the writer has a message they're trying to get across about society, about um, the context, whatever it is, about the nature of man, and that we use the characters in the stories as a jumping off point to really explore the writer's ideas and themes. Whereas this student's analysis of ideas and themes for the writer is the sort of bolt on at the end. In Jekyll's full statement of the case, Stevenson presents how the repression of the evil inside man will ultimately lead to a person's death. Jekyll explains in letters how his devil had been long caged and it came out roaring. The use of the motif devil clearly emphasises the evil in man. The fact that Jekyll had kept his devil long caged but inevitably came out roaring could represent how the oppression of a man's true desires would inevitably bottle up to the point where it would be explosive. Also the use of the adverb roaring creates a vivid image in the reader's mind of unstable it is to bottle the inner evil because usually the verb roar is associated with animals such as the wild cats which are dangerous and highly unpredictable. And this could possibly be an implicit warning from Stevenson that repressions of one's true desires and nature will eventually lead to an unpredictable unwanted outburst. Furthermore this could be in reference to the Marxist revolution as the devil which came out roaring could arguably symbolise the working class waiting to explode into their revolution. Additionally, in this chapter, Jekyll says man is not truly one, but truly two. This could symbolise how there are two sides to every person, good and evil, and no matter how hard you try to repress the evil, it will still be there, and the repression of the evil may just consume you. Now, to me, this paragraph, up until the last few lines about the two sides of good and evil, is saying almost exactly what the previous paragraph said. It's almost as if the students just sort of thought, I'm not sure what to write here, I'll write this. And, you know, if you've made a point really well, don't make the same point again. You know, you've, you've made those points, they don't need to be repeated, move on to another idea. And this comes to that highest level six approach of having a line of argument, a sort of theory that you're going to explore. This answer in the middle here is just stalling a little bit. It's kind of repeating itself now, rather than having two or three good ideas to explore. Lastly, in Dr. Lanyard's narrative, Stevenson presents how, although good and evil are polar opposites, the two are intrinsically connected. When Lanyard describes the mixture of potion, he says it was a reddish hue, brightened in colour, dark purple, slowly to a watery green. As red and green are polar opposites to the colour wheel, it could be a metaphor to suggest how the good Jekyll and evil Hyde are both opposites yet connected. So that's a good idea, but I'd love then to jump out and say, so what is Stevenson saying about people in that? Furthermore, the fact that there isn't an instantaneous switch from the red to green, but the transition period of purple could suggest how there isn't just a flip between good and evil, but a transition. Also, the fact that the transition is slow emphasises this and shows how Jekyll's best efforts to try and split his personality wouldn't work, but in fact both sides would stay connected, possibly communicating the idea that there's no pure good or evil, just elements of both. This could be linked to the Marxist theory as the revolution may be slow, just as the change in the chemical, but eventually uh, there may be an uprising. So that's a, you know, a nice um, idea, an extended analysis of a metaphor. Um, you've got to ask yourself, I guess, does this answer the question about the presentation of good versus evil? This would have benefited from a, a short introduction which just said something like, the presentation of good and evil in the text is used as a metaphor for the... Uh, uprising of the Marxist revolution just to kind of, because that's the idea this student's got look good and evil is about rich and poor which is about Marxism so I'm not going to explicitly write about good and evil all the time I'm going to explore good and evil and how it applies to Marxism which is absolutely fine but it, but it would have benefited from a very brief introduction which made that link clear if you've enjoyed this video please do subscribe to the channel check out Mr. Bruff's guide to Jekyll and Hyde at mrbruff.com too